So welcome everybody to Rising Sun Town Meeting. So, As usual, forgot to call the roll. We'll know that, that uh, three commissioners here are here. Mr. Berkowitz is absent, and the town administrator and the town clerk are here. Uh, well, have the approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Does anybody have any comments about that? Corrections or anything? <coughs> Move and second all in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. It's carried. Okay. The next item, Mr. George Beer will make a presentation about Maple Heights Phase 2. busy agenda this evening. My name is George Beer. Um, and the owner of Delaware Valley Development Company, also the owner of Maple Heights Apartments, a community we built about five or six years ago um, on the east side of town. Um, we have had a fair amount of success there. We, we seem to have happy residents. We, we have always had a waiting list and would like to build a second phase, a smaller phase, um, in, uh, on an adjacent piece of ground to Maple Heights. I wanted to talk a little bit about what Maple Heights is, and I think the the, the kind of defining factor um, on apartment complex is who lives there. Um, and so I, I went through our records a little bit and, and, and brought some facts forward about Maple Heights. Um, first of all, 75% of all of our tenants over at Maple Heights actually came from Cecil County. Over half of those tenants came from the actual <coughs> zip code that Rising Sun is in. So my tenants are all local. Um, we had, didn't have a whole bunch of tenants coming in from other states or either other counties in Maryland. 27% um, of my tenants are either elderly, disabled, or receiving assistance from Veteran Affairs. 13% um, of our tenants do receive some rent, or 13 of our tenants do receive rental assistance. Um, of those, five of them are receiving um, SSI, uh, Disability Social Security, along with um, rental assistance from the county. We have seven other tenants who receive some rental assistance for employee. We have one resident in total, non-elderly residents, non-disabled residents. We have one resident in total who's currently unemployed. Um, 
the complexion of, of our tenancy is consistent with the town of Rising Sun. Um, what kind of burden are we on, on the town? Um, given 75% of, of our tenants were coming from this immediate area anyway, our marginal impact on the school district was about one child per grade. Our police calls over the course of the year, we've had 24 police calls, works out to less than one, one a month. And when you take out the police calls that were, were for either errant 911 calls or that someone just looks suspicious in the neighborhood, the number works out to be about 15 police calls or about one every two weeks. And talking to Chief Peterson, he says, given the size of the community, it's about average for what, what we see in rising sun in general. Um, we use, a, we're very light users of water and sewer. We use about 75 gallons a unit a day. Um, when we pay for sewer heat to use, though, we're always paying for the full 200, even though we're using a lot less. Um, the development that we propose is, right now we have 78 units, and we'd like to build another 60 units. Um, the 60 units would be primarily, or, or the unit mix would, would be a slightly different configuration with mostly ones and twos and very few threes. Um, probably spend about $8 million developing the 60 units. Um, most of those jobs are local. A lot of the money gets spent here. Um, I think when we did the first phase, our, our site contractor was, uh, was Melvin Joseph. I mean, there's a bunch of local people who've worked on this. Um, We've also estimated that, that if we are able to move forward and, and build the second phase, you know, our, our payment to the town is for water and sewer impact fees is over a million dollars. Um, I know that, that the town has a busy meeting this evening. Um, I do plan to come back and... And, and everybody in the back here... Why don't you use the mic? I... Well, I'm not done. Right. Be glad to. Uh, Thank you, Mayor Fisher. Um, we are going to come back and ask for for support from the town. We didn't just want to want to come in today and and give everybody a kind of state of the state of the apartment complex for Maple Heights. Um, and with that, I guess I will turn it over to to you, Mayor, because we're done. Nowhere. Oh, it's going to be right next to. Um, there is a, there is behind an adjacent, that White House? Behind the White House and on the left of the White House. So it was going to be a single homes there. It's actually going to be townhouses. I, I think that there were originally planned, there was originally about 50 townhomes planned there. We were going to put 60 stacked flats there. So actually from, from a footprint standpoint, we're going to actually be covering up a lot less ground than was originally planned. It was all townhouses. So it's there. going to be along the road. It isn't going to be... No, it's going to be back on railroad tracks. Okay. Yeah. okay. So what's going to happen to the part that's along the road there? Um, nothing yet. No, nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and I should have said that I'm um, going to have um, Eden Aarons with me, which is, who is one of my, my smartest project managers. She's also my daughter. And I have my good friend Norman Wilson with me just because he's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so for the marriage report, uh, I just want to briefly discuss three, the three items that were on the table back there. Uh, first of all, uh, I think that the town agenda should be more responsive to input from the citizens. So you can read for yourself what uh, I proposed. Uh, and I think there should be a comment period before the decision meetings are made. I think. Uh, copies of all legislation should be furnished before at the meeting before it's passed, uh, and uh, that's that's briefly what that is. On the other score, as most of you know, there's been a little bit of controversy in this town in the last month. Uh, so I've contacted the uh, Community Mediation Upper Shore Incorporated, which provides a free mediation service or conflict resolution service. So I propose to the board that we uh, use their services. And lastly, it was, where is it? Um, anyway, you have in your hands a copy of, uh, of 
all the bills that were unpaid at the last meeting. A big to-do was made about all those bills that weren't paid, and it was my fault because they weren't paid. Well, let me tell you, if I'm going to sign something, I have to be a part of that. And I wasn't a part of anything that took place before that, and I still believe that it is my right to not sign it. But I did in order to tamp down the controversy. But if you'll notice, a fair number of those bills were June bills, they weren't July bills. And the rest of the bills weren't due till the after the 1st of August. So, you know, I believe that it was a political statement rather than a, a financial report. So, for that, I will now turn the meeting and relinquish the rest of my time to my attorney, David Carey, from Bel Air. Uh, I'll, I, to be fair to everybody, I guess I will use the microphone so that yeah. folks can hear what I have to say. Yeah, some people are like to sit in the back row, like church. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mayor Fisher. Um, commissioners of the Town of Rising Sun, appreciate this brief opportunity that I'm going to take. Uh, Mayor Fisher has asked me to come before you. I know that I know uh, several of you here at the table from my past involvement. Uh, uh, Mayor Fisher uh, uh, introduced me as an attorney from Bel Air. I'm also an attorney from Elton. Our firm, Brown, Brown & Young, of course, has, firm, has offices in, in Bel Air and Elton. Uh, but I also bring some experience as an elected official. Been on the a commissioner with the town of Bel Air for 15 years. Served several terms as mayor. Also a past president of the Maryland Municipal League. And uh, have, some rep have some experience representing municipalities as I'm currently the town attorney for the town of Port Deposit. In fact, you look at my resume, and it's probably very similar to the resume of your current town attorney, Jay Gullen, who's also a, a friend and colleague of mine. Uh, I'm here because Mayor Fisher asked me to take a look at ordinance number 2012-03, which I understand was passed on July 24th, and uh, tell him if I thought that it was a valid and enforceable ordinance. Uh, I initially refused because I understood my friend Jay Gullo had blessed it and already looked at it. And as I said, he's a friend, and I, I respect his uh, legal opinion. In fact. I called him uh, yesterday to speak with him about this matter. I understand he emailed me back that he's on vacation and, and that we're going to speak next week. But uh, anyway, after talking to several people and reviewing the ordinance I, 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 and speaking with Mayor Fisher, uh, I I've, uh, agreed to come here and just give you my legal opinion on this uh, on his behalf. Uh, as I'm sure you know, there are different governing documents in a local government. You have a charter, which of course is uh, very similar to the Constitution, just like we have a Constitution in the United States. And then you have a code, which is full of ordinances, which must be consistent with your, uh, your Constitution or your charter. Uh, if you want to change the charter, you want to change anything in the charter just like you want to change anything in the Constitution, you have to amend it. And there's a, a process in Maryland law that you must follow, which includes publishing a summary of the changes in a newspaper of local uh, circulation over a four-week period a number of times voting on it, and then a 40-day period where the citizens uh, can refer it, can take it to a referendum, because you're changing the constitution of the town. It's very important. Then you've got your code, which are ordinances, which you as a body can change. They're not subject to referendum. Uh, they're on, run on a different level as ordinances. They have to be consistent with your charter. And I took a look at 2012-03 uh, uh, and uh, to see what, uh, what it did. And it becomes clear to me that this is not an ordinance as it was passed and as it was represented, but it actually amends your charter. Um, I'll give you two quick examples why. I will say it's rather unusual to see a 13-page ordinance with all these different subject matters in it. Uh, but that's the way uh, it was presented and that's the way it was passed. But I'll give you an example as to why, two examples as to why I believe this ordinance that you have passed is really a charter amendment and is therefore ineffective as an ordinance. Your charter, your constitution says the mayor shall report to the board of commissioners at. Can you read what section? The charter oh, charter. okay. I have the charter right here. Great. Uh, there's really just one section in the charter that refers to uh, the um, the mayor's powers. C13. Correct. Got you. Get there. 
Right. So C13 and um, is the is the, the the full paragraph as far as your charter goes. And, I, and I'll admit, you know, this is a generally kind of a weak mayor system. It is um, it, the, the enumerated powers are not are not that many. Uh, the, the mayor is obviously non-voting except uh, for ties, which is not unusual. Uh, but one of the the, first, the powers that is listed there, down in the middle, uh, shall report to the board of commissioners at their stated meetings the general state of the town. I think you should read the whole thing, paragraph yeah, in order to sure, make I'll, it uh, uh, reasonable to our audience. Okay, I, I will do that. I'll be happy to do that. I'm going to refer to specific powers, but I'll, I, I'm, if you'd like me to. The mayor, in virtue of his office, may call on any officer of the town entrusted with the receipt and expenditure of public money for a statement of his accounts as often as he shall see proper. He shall see that the ordinances are faithfully executed and report to the Board of Commissioners at their stated meetings the general state of the town and may call special meetings of the commissioners whenever he may see proper. The mayor may take part, the mayor may take part in all discussions but he shall have no vote except in the event of a tie, then the mayor may cast a tie-breaking vote. The council shall appoint from its members a person to serve as acting mayor who shall serve in the absence of the mayor. And that's it. That's what it says. And the one I was referring to, uh, he shall see the, oh, I'm sorry, he shall report to the board of commissioners at their stated meetings the general state of the town. Sounds pretty simple. You have these monthly meetings. He is required by your charter to report to the commissioners at those meetings. So if you want to change that, it's a charter amendment. And what has happened in ordinance number 201203 is he will now report annually to the commissioners on the state of the town. You have tried to pass an ordinance saying that duty that he has at every meeting, he now shall do once a year. And you know what? You can do that. If you want to change your charter, you can do that. But you have to call it a charter amendment. You have to advertise it. You have to let everybody know you're going to vote on it, not just drop it in at a meeting. You have to have a vote. And then if the people don't like it, you got to give them 40 days to collect the 20% signatures if they want to go to a referendum. You can absolutely do that. But if you're going to change the charter, you have to do it as a charter amendment. The second one that I'll point out is that, uh, and I read part of it at uh, Commissioner Osborne's request, he shall see that the ordinances are faithfully executed. He is the mayor. He's been elected by the citizens. He's going to see that the ordinances are faithfully executed, and you have many ordinances. Um, the language in Ordinance 2012-03 essentially strips that power from him. It says that the mayor shall see that the ordinances are faithfully executed by the town administrator. Now, it's a little bit of semantics there. I guess, yeah, he's still seeing maybe that the ordinances are being executed, but he's not executing them. He's seeing that the town administrator is doing it. Now, again, if you want to take that power away from him and give it to your town administrator, amend the charter to do that. You can do that, but it isn't the proper way to do it. If you're doing a charter, if you're amending the charter, you should amend it. And then lastly, I'll point out how you are violating your own code by uh, the ordinance that you uh, have passed. And that is at section 218 of your code, prior approval by commissioner. And that says, if you want to do an ordinance, and now I'm, this, this gives you, this um, kind of gives you the benefit of the doubt. You want to say it's an ordinance? Okay, it's an ordinance. It says all ordinances before presentation to the commissioners must have been or shall have been approved as to form and legality by the town attorney or his authorized representative and shall have been examined and approved for administration by the mayor or his authorized representative. Now, I understand that Mayor Fisher knew nothing about this ordinance until he sat down, was sworn in, and went to the first meeting. Uh, I've reviewed all the minutes that are available. I see no uh, point at which this was presented to the mayor which section 2-118.1 requires. So you want to call it an ordinance? I think you're wrong. I think it's a charter amendment. But you want to call it an ordinance? You violated your own rules about ordinances. Now, that's the legal opinion. The other part I'm going to say is, to, that I'd like to just speak on very briefly, is as an elected official, a former, or a former president of the Maryland Municipal League, 
somebody who believes in town government, uh, who believes that the people here are in a, a better form of government than the folks who live in unincorporated areas, who have to drive to Elton to try and uh, talk to one of their elected officials. I believe in it strongly. I've been a resident a long time, and commissioner for 15 years, and very committed to the cause. Um, this uh, coup, if you want to call it, this attempt, the first time, the, the, the day that the man takes office, whether you vote for him or not, he is the, the duly elected mayor of this town. To strip him of his powers at the first meeting in this way, well, I would just suggest. Excuse me. Yeah. Are we getting into opinion now or are we talking about facts, sir? Are we talking about opinion now or facts? We're, we're talking okay, about. Well, I, I, we're no, talking about the ordinance and the charter we've written before. Now we're talking okay. about. Okay. All right. Why do I think the town has an attorney and I, I, I find it. Uh, just unbelievable that he's not. Point of order. Mr. Yeah, Carey has the floor. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay, I'll say it a different way. I'll say it a different way. Mayor Fisher was elected by the people. I know some of you, a lot, obviously, it was a very close election. Uh, he wants to work with you. He deserves a chance. And to pass something like this without him knowing about it, right at the first meeting, I'm just going to suggest to you that sometimes you might want to think about. Uh, there's reasons that Congress has, to, has such a low favorability rating, and it's because people perceive that all they do is fight and bicker, and they don't get anything done. I think the citizens elected all of you to work together. And I'm going to make the suggestion that you do that in the spirit of goodwill for the citizens and repeal this ordinance, because if you don't, there may be litigation for the reasons that I just stated. Thank you. Questions if that's appropriate. Um, I don't know that it is. Okay. Well, well you want he's the mayor. If you have questions, I'll ask them. And he's the mayor, so you tell me. If it's inappropriate, I won't do it. I'd like to ask you why didn't you do this when Jay was present? Because uh, I was just contacted uh, last week. I didn't know that Jay wouldn't be here. I okay. called him. I just and, yeah, that's why. I'll be, and, and he's going to call me Monday and we're going to talk about this. Was this done gratis or were, did you charge a fee to the town for this? Town is not paying for this. Do you find it a conflict of interest to be representing the mayor while the mayor is the sitting mayor and has representation through the town, through Jay Gullah? Well, uh, no, I don't. Uh, he's obviously not satisfied with the representation he's getting. He agree on some very basic things. Yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry? I don't satisfied with you. Okay, well, I'm not representing you, so. You're here in your meeting. Okay, well, is there any more questions? It's not on the agenda. Are, are there any other questions? What's the town's legal recourse against the commission? Is that it? Besides legal? Um, well, I think. Hold them the, responsible for it? Yeah, I, I, I don't think um, that's appropriate for me. But is what you just said the threat? What's appropriate to be here? At the very end? Yes. If, if, you threatened us that he would come and sue us for what the commissioner said. We're threatened to litigate. Yeah, that's right. That. I didn't think so. Did you, yeah. you think that's that was an open okay. threat? Well, Anybody else have a question? He agreed. Anybody? That was my Thanks. question. I was wondering if that was a cha -ching. threat. <laughs> I hear dollar signs. <laughs> okay. Next item. Staff report. You all have a chance to talk when it's when it's over. When, three minutes. Okay. Yeah, was Okay, we have a, a couple items to report to the elected body about some of the goings on in the different departments. Under the town administration, uh, the grant that I've been talking about for the last couple of months regarding replacement of the HVAC system, uh, the system is in, the grant has been approved, so the state is going to pick up uh, $10,000 of the cost for the new HVAC system. Um, in the past, you've heard me refer to legal uh, cases involving a slip and trip accident on a sidewalk. Our public works employees are currently uh, giving depositions on, the, um, on that slip and trip situation. 
Um, I attended the National Night Out celebration in conjunction with the Boys and Girls Club last week. Uh, the Chief has some information regarding that also. Um, the, this is for the elected body. Um, the Boys and Girls Club approached me today about their old building on Queen Street, um, which was the old town hall building. They have a small postage stamp you know, piece of glass in the front, and they're having a hard time getting somebody to cut that glass on a regular basis. And so the idea was floated that since it is so small, uh, they asked me to see if we could have our public works guys just swing by there, cut it uh, real quick. So I said that I would bring that to the board's attention if you would like to give me some direction on that. Um, so think about that and get back to me on that. Under finances, the auditor has completed the preliminary review of our uh, finances. They will be coming back in September uh, for some more follow-up on that. Under sewer and water, um, our meter program obviously is complete. But now we're getting other, other communities uh, wanting to come in and see the veto program and how it works and how it's operating. Um, I got an update from the sewer project engineer today that everything is moving along fine. Uh, they have gotten some benchmarks. Uh, they've laid out the locations of the buildings from a grading standpoint to start staking those things out. Uh, they're making good progress on that. We have also, um, as I've encouraged our employees to do, there were some questions raised regarding the original design by our sewage treatment plant operator. So uh, those questions have been turned over to the engineer uh, to look at. Um, the, we had to replace one of the pumps at well number 12 for uh, sewer and water. That pump had burned out, um, so we have uh, replaced that pump about a week and a half ago. Under streets and sidewalks, I was speaking to Commissioner Osborne about this in having a meeting with the town's engineer to review the possibility of the installation of a storm drain of which Commissioner Osborne uh, can elaborate on under her report. Um, we've also, Mr. Braun, at the last meeting you had asked about the shrubbery growing around the back of Martins. Commissioner Osborne and myself and the Public Works Director met over there. We reached out to the shopping center and the property on the corner and we hope to be getting that all cleaned out next week. Um, our intention is to clean that out to the point where we can expose the road, because I don't think people have seen that section of road in probably over a decade because of all the growth in there. So we're looking to get that cleaned up. Um, we are also uh, getting prices to replace sidewalk and curving along Pogue Avenue. We believe that our public works employees are going to be able to do that in-house, so that will save a significant amount of money. Under Park and Recreation, um, our public works employees, as requested by the Park and Rec Commissioner Marion, have, uh, they painted some of the benches down there. They took care of some safety issues uh, regarding the benches. We had somebody drive some nails into the wooded benches and they were exposed in a hazard. Uh, so we're dealing with that. Um, I've also, and if anybody in the audience is an expert in this, this would be great. We have some trees that are not doing well down there in the park. And I know prior to me being here, Doc Taylor used to be the one that you know was the, the, the go-to tree guy uh, to do evaluations on trees. Um, so I've reached out to Rupert Rossetti from the Octorero Watershed for him to give us some recommendations of some people that we could contact every once in a while to come down and assess some of these trees. Because there's like five of them in the park that I wouldn't be surprised if in about a year and a half that they're dead. They're not doing well. So we want to get somebody to come in and look at those so we don't lose them. Um, Commissioner Marion is going to elaborate more on our dog park. Um, we are 
trying to delineate the areas of millings that have to be removed down there because we are in the process of securing our stormwater permits from the county to begin the installation of the park project. Um, on the planning and zoning, our next planning and zoning meeting is uh, uh, the, uh, two Mondays from now. I'm not sure of the dates um, of that. Um, we do have a case before us involving the laundromat car wash area. It's an ongoing uh, case regarding the installation of a new sign. I do want to remind everybody something that I have said before, that our sign ordinance is a mixed match of uh, language that has been borrowed from different communities over the years. And the sign ordinance, in, in my opinion, is too restrictive for our commercial businesses. Generally speaking, it limits the size of a sign that somebody on the Main Street area can put up to roughly nine square feet. And anyone who's running a business knows that's not a very large sign. So as I've said before, I think we need to uh, make some changes to that because unfortunately it puts the staff in a position of having to make people go through the planning and zoning process. So I'd like to encourage us to get that change. From a code enforcement standpoint, 107 Britton Drive in the Summer Hill development, anyone who lives up there knows that that house is under construction. Um, it's about 50%, uh, 50 to 75% completed. Um, to date, I have done a footing inspection, a foundation inspection, a backfill inspection, a basement slab inspection, a framing inspection, a rough electrical inspection, a plumbing inspection, a fire sprinkler inspection, and today I did an installation inspection. The property or the builder is anticipating having the house done and ready for occupancy towards the end of September. Um, there have been some questions about the driveway entrance into that property because it is a corner property. Some communities will have a zoning code that regulates what you do with driveway entrances on a corner property. Our code does not have that. Um, so the uh, contractor or property owner originally came in wanting to put two driveway entrances, um, one on, uh, on each uh, side of the property. They have since changed their mind and they are only putting one driveway entrance in there. And there were some concerns being raised because the driveway is going to go up to the garage as you would see it, but then they also want to have a piece of the driveway come off and go up to the side of the house because of some, uh, to make the house more attractive for elderly or handicap accessible people to be able to get in. I've been asked a lot of questions, can they do that? It is just one driveway cut. So given the fact that there's only one driveway cut, the only thing that would regulate the driveway at that point is how close it is to the neighboring property line. And as long as they maintain a distance of five feet and they do not exceed the amount of coverage that they're permitted on the lot, they can uh, have that driveway go up to the side of the house. So I know there's been some questions about that, so I wanted to answer that. I also did a UNO inspection today for a new used furniture shop that is moving in at Five Valley View. Uh, for those that remember where Oddworks Mechanical used to be located, um, it seems it, it is the same business that operates up at the auction area by Kriegers. They're actually, their, their business is growing and they're expanding and they chose to come to Rising Sun. So the building is in fairly decent shape. There, there are some emergency lighting issues that I'm asking them to address. But as I've done with many of the businesses, unless it is a jump right out there life safety issue, we do allow people to bring the building up to code as they go through uh, the process. So that uh, they don't have a grand opening set yet. Uh, because they've got a lot of inventory that they have to clean up in the building. Um, with that, that concludes
my new point. We have had the police report. Now, he did, he did give us a written one. If you'd like, I can read it out. Or if you have it in front of you, if you would like to read it out. Okay. There were one assault, one, five juvenile complaints. The, there were 430 service calls, 152 criminal complaints, 20, 204 public service calls, and traffic related 74. There was one assault, five juvenile complaints, two thefts, criminal arrests, one, tampering with gas company equipment, one, theft, three, trespass school property, one, Traffic citations six, traffic warnings twenty one, parking citations five. So, uh, I'm not aware of what activity reports are. Uh, the, this agenda was changed since I saw it last. Did you have your lawyer on? <laughs> so, okay, uh, what are the activity reports? Now, what you read is the act, those are the activity reports for the police department. What you read, that's the activity. Okay, I covered the unpaid town bills last time. Under new business, the attorney was originally listed there. I felt that it was only prudent to put him earlier in the program so he can go home if he desires to do that or stay here or do whatever he wants to. Um, okay, Commissioner Comments. Mr. Berkowitz is not here, Mr. Commissioner Marion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to uh, update the board really quickly. Um, uh, Calvin uh, talked a little bit about this. I did do a walkthrough of each of our town parks. Um, I did find a few issues that needed to be addressed. Um, they've currently actually already addressed some of the issues, um, but I am planning on having a meeting uh, within the next week to uh, talk about some more of the uh, issues that I see that need to be addressed at Community Park and uh, Diddy Richardson Park. Um, as far as Triangle Park goes, I do have a uh, conference call scheduled with uh, the Octorera Watershed the uh, Department of Natural Resources and our landscape architect. Um, we are still in the process of uh, removing the millings and I will keep the board informed at each juncture um, of what we're going to be doing. Um, I did have a um, something I wanted to bring to the board, an idea. Um, I've talked to a few citizens in town and I've talked to a few businesses in town and I uh, contacted the uh, Chamber of Commerce about possibly doing an event, um, kind of like a fall fest type event. Um, in town. Um, most likely location would probably be the municipal lot there where they do Sunfest. Um, I think it would be a great idea. Um, I'm willing to hear any of the other commissioners' inputs on this. Um, it would be a, um, a joint juncture between me and uh, the town and the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Um, and uh, I also wanted to um, update the town that um, I am not currently uh, working on the website or the Facebook because the mayor has not re signed the resolution yet um, So I am not currently in charge of that. So I did receive a phone call shortly before the town meeting asking me a uh, question about the website And I just wanted to say uh, the reason I'm not in charge of it is because of that So, um, Thank you, mr. Mayor We had looked at doing it at Community Park, but there were a few improvements that I feel need to be made, and also the weather was an issue that was discussed um, regarding uh, October. We were considering doing it in October, and uh, possible uh, rain and it getting swampy and messy down there. So, yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Uh, to comment on tonight, um, I would like to say, um, based on tonight's meeting, I said one comment I'd like to point out. Um, I ran into you yesterday in town hall, and I've gotten the letter requesting mediation, and I, I commended you for that. I think it's a great idea. I think um, 
you know, we got off to a rough start, and I was thinking that the mediation was a very positive step, and I'm glad you did that, and I want to move forward with that. Um, with that said, um, I think it sends a mixed message that at the same meeting we, we, you request mediation and bring your own attorney to the meeting. Um, so I just want to comment on that. Um, the other comment I have is um, directed uh, particularly to Keith Campbell, but also to all the folks here. Um, at the last town meeting during citizen comment, uh, Keith was speaking, and, and um, I had a, a, all I can describe as an outburst. Um, it was unprofessional, and uh, I want to apologize for it. I'm sorry about that. Keith is a good guy. We all know him, and he's on our zoning appeal board, and uh, that was wrong. So, thank you. Very much. There are several items I'd like to cover this evening. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the first item is uh, the Pogue Avenue repair in front of number 10 Pogue Avenue. As the uh, town administrator mentioned, we're hoping that our uh, town crew can handle that repair rather than uh, putting it out on contract. Uh, Mr. Braun brought up the issues of the tree limbs at uh, the corner of Martins, and we contacted the property owners and. Uh, nobody seems to know where the property lines are, so the town will be trimming those branches so that we can see the corner and the street. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Bonnenberger and uh, Sam Cole from Armstrong Telephone Company and um, uh, Ron. Um, Yes, Ron Thomas uh, met with, uh, we met with the Armstrong Telephone Company. Uh, and jointly we are in the process of resolving the water runoff issues occurring at the Armstrong Cooper Street facility. Uh, we will be meeting with an engineer about the uh, proposed uh, uh, drainage system on that street and uh, uh, we also talked to, to him about the one there on uh, Mount Street, did we not? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so we'll be meeting with him on the, on the about Cooper Street. Um, while I was there, I also noticed the state of repair of the sidewalks on Cooper Street. There's bad, there really is bad as the ones on Cherry Street. We received a complaint about the street, one of the streets in Maple Heights, and I uh, didn't have a pen and pencil with me, so I didn't write down the street, but I did drive around in there, uh, so we're looking into that issue, and who's responsible for that. Someone at the last meeting, uh, other than Mr. Braun, mentioned something about streets to me, and I, for the life of me, can't remember who it was or what street it was, so kindly let me know again so I can write it down. You know how it is when I get older, our brains begin to malfunction here and there. I know this is our workshop session, and because it is, I want to share some of my thoughts with you, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, and townspeople. First, I want to apologize to all who attended the previous meeting. The Mayor and Commissioners were in an executive session discussing several legal and personnel issues. The items we needed to cover were more, non were more numerous than we knew beforehand. Unfortunately, we had to deal with those issues before holding our open meeting. Perhaps in the future we can schedule executive meetings for the evening before our general business meeting so as not to, inc so as not to inconvenience any attendees of the regular meeting. To D. Emsley, I want to thank you for your support when the previous mayor and commissioners were rude to me. I was and am grateful for that support. I also want you to know that I do appreciate your voice at the previous meeting. You were right. What we did at the first meeting in July was unusual. I know you even think it was despicable. It is unfortunate that these resolutions and the ordinance were necessary. I have spoken to Mayor Fisher on many occasions both before and after the election. Before running for mayor, Mr. Fisher wanted to know what position I thought needed a replacement more, mayor or town administrator. I thought the mayoral position was most in need of change. Sorry, Tom. Uh, he did tell me he wanted to replace certain key consultants, even naming some possible candidates, all of whom I thought would not suit our needs. 
Because he had attended no executive sessions before the election, he was clearly not in a position to know all of the issues that are on the town's table. Because of comments made to me in my office prior to the swearing-in ceremonies after the election, I became quite concerned about the havoc that he might cause in the first few days of his tenure if he actually did all of the things he said he was going to do. Therefore, I approached Mr. Bonnenberger about the resolutions we passed and the Ordinance 2012-03. None of these items, in my opinion, are changes to our charter. The resolutions are in place to maintain order during the transition from one mayor to another. The ordinance ensures that we, the commissioners and the mayor, know what our responsibilities are. We do not need our mayor being the town administrator. If he had wanted that position, he should have applied for it, not run for mayor. Now Mayor Fisher wants to know that if I, ta if I taped any of the conversations that occurred before the swearing-in ceremony. I told him I didn't think at the time that it had been necessary. And his comment to me was that he had more credibility in town than I do, and that whatever I said, it was my word against his. He has now told me this three times. My main concern and the reason I ran for the job of commissioners was the condition of the sidewalks and streets in town. Mr. Mummy didn't know that, so he appointed me to Parks and Recreation. Okay, maybe I can deal with that. But he didn't like the job I was doing, so he moved me to streets and sidewalks. Yay! After he moved me, I told him that was really the job I wanted anyway. There was one thing while I was on Parks and Recreation that I hope is still being explored. That would be a path from Valley View over to the Dee Dee Richardson Park. Calvin and I did explore a couple of possibilities. Travis, I hope you can follow up on that. After being elected, I was given a copy of our charter and ordinances. The book was almost worthless as far as the ordinances go. The ordinances, uh, ordinances have been passed that are not in the book. Others contradict each other, and several are simply outdated. So a second of my goals is to get, what, to get our ordinances in order. We have contracted with General Code to help us maintain that goal. <coughs> Uh, and Calvin, what is our progress on that? Um, we have a, generally our first homework assignment is to look for documents that they have determined are missing page numbers and they have identified clear conflicts and they want us to try to find meeting minutes that might be able to clarify what those conflicts are. So it, it's more of a, a staff issue of us going through this assignment. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bonnerberger. Since I am uh, liaison for streets and sidewalks, it behooves me to find a way to fund the repairs that are really needed. We used to get funds from the road use taxes collected. Now we receive only a stipend. Our total expected revenue available this year is $33,730. We probably usually spend half that much uh, for snow removal. Our expenses budgeted are total $65,760. So we know that uh, the revenue that's directly for uh, streets and sidewalks is considerably less than what we need to spend. Our ordinance says that the town will pay half and the property owner will pay half. That policy was enforced for many years. In the past few years, that ordinance has been ignored. To be truthful with you, there is no sidewalk repair fund, nor has any money been set aside annually for necessary improvements and repairs. Like it or not, we the property owners in town will have to pay for any repairs through increased tax levies. One of my goals is to establish a sidewalk repair fund where a specified amount of our real estate tax is earmarked for this. That, however, is going to take a few years to accumulate into a usable fund. My proposal is also to add a $6 a month uh, levy to each water bill for a total of $72 per year earmarked and set aside for sidewalk repair exclusively. Mr. Mayor, you asked me for five suggestions to improve things in this town. Here are three. What are your specific suggestions? Well, I, okay, my, 
My suggestions are what we... Specific suggestions. What? Specific suggestions. That we uh, investigate a more cost-effective water system than we are presently pursuing. That, that's, that would save the town $385,075 a year. Well, I'd be happy to supply the facts, but, you know, I, 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 I will be happy to supply the facts. Well, that's, that's the one, there's a big one. I'd like to make a motion that we allow uh, Travis Marion to um, assume the responsibilities for our website and uh, electronic media uh, issues immediately. This, this is a workshop meeting. We don't make decisions at workshop meetings. We can. Well, I, that was not my impression. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't that have come under old business anyway? Pardon me? Wouldn't that have come under old business or new business anyway? Rather than I, I don't think there's any objection to him doing it. You can't hear it in the back. You can pass the microphone around and speak up. I don't think there's any objections to doing it. I mean, uh, he said he was going to do it. Uh, that was one of the campaign promises that he made to do that. So. If you would sign the resolution, sir. Well, I don't I think, think if, if you had taken me in, in, in confidence to be a part of that, it might be a different story. But you did not. You worked around me. Even, it's very evident tonight, there's been a lot of going on without my knowledge. And after all, I am the elected mayor of this town. The only, re the only reason I'm making the statement is just because um, legally, because the resolution hasn't been signed, that's why I can't do it. Um, if he will sign the resolution, then that's great, but I'm still going to hold to my guns that I can't be in charge of it until I'm put in charge of it. Um, it was passed by the majority of the board, so I just... Well, then let the board sign it. Simple. I don't have any, I just have a problem with signing things that I haven't been a part of, that were done behind my back, in fact. 